Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, well, as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So what do I have for you today my friends? Well, we're going to kick things off with a bunch of news regarding the RTX 2060 mobility and we also have some leaks for the 2080 Ti, 2080 and 2070 mobility GPUs as well. So, these come to us thanks to the now rather infamous leaker Tom Apisak, whose name I always feel like I'm mispronouncing, but never mind. And we have a bunch of specs and all sorts of stuff. So let's just get stuck in because we have quite a bit to discuss with this particular topic. So the RTX 2060 has shown up in the FutureMark 3DMark database, and it is mentioned to be a mobility part with, of course, Turing inside. So. What specs do we actually see here? Well, we actually have two sets of specs here as we have a Max Q variant as well as this variant I'm just about to go through just now. So we see memory of 6144 megabytes, so obviously 6 gigs. We see a core clock of 960 megahertz with a memory bus clock of 1750. And for the Max Q variant, we do see some differences here. We see again that memory clock of 6 gigs, 61, 44 megabytes to be exact, the core clock of 975, but then a memory bus clock with 100, sorry, 1500, should I say, megahertz. So essentially, what we are seeing here is obviously higher core clocks but lower memory. Now obviously we are presuming with the desktop variant of the 2060 that it's going to be using a cut down TU-106 GPU core so it's fairly likely that we are seeing the same in this particular chip but obviously just the mobility variant. However as I said we don't just have the 2060 we also have the 2070 as well. And this time we have the 2070 Max Q and we have an OpenCL score, I'm oh, sorry, the Geekbench score which obviously we have the OpenCL score right there at the top is what it means to say. However we have 2,304 CUDA cores and a clock speed of 1300 megahertz. It will have 8 gigs of GDDR6 memory and again, we do have that score of 223753 right at the top of this particular result here. So we're most likely going to be seeing a non-Max-Q design as well for the 2070, given that the 2060 has one. It'd be a bit weird if the lower-end SKU had one and the higher-end SKU didn't, but of course that is a presumption on my part, but I would say it is a logical presumption. Anyway, next up we have the RTX 2080, and we have both Max-Q and laptop variants for this one. So let's start off in the logical place, at least in my opinion, with the laptop variant. And we do see, obviously, some exact, well, I was about to say similarities, but that's not really the right word, given that they are exactly the same when it comes to the CUDA cores and the amount of memory, that being 2944 or 2944, if you want to be fancy about it, and 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. However, where the differences begin is that the laptop variant is clocked at 1590 megahertz, and the Max-Q comes in at 12.30, which is obviously a substantial, definitely significant difference in clock speeds, When you, especially when you look at the differences between the Max-Q variants of the 2060 that we discussed mere moments ago. And of course, we've left the top dog till last, the 2080 tie, as we have a laptop variant which found its home in this particular instance in an Asus Zephyrus MGM 501 GS notebook that just rolls right off the tongue. That's a real memorable name. I didn't just forget it the instant I said it or anything. No, 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 not at all. So, what do we actually have with this one? So, this time we see a configuration of 4352 or 4352 CUDA cores and a clock speed of 1540 megahertz. And unsurprisingly, we also see an increase in the amount of GDDR6 memory as well and we have 11 gigabytes here. At the moment at least we have not seen hide nor hair of a Max Q variant but again given the presence of 2080 and the 2060 I would fully expect to see one but of course that again is a presumption on my part. So the sharp eared and eyed of you out there will probably have noticed that this mobile variant is very close in its specs to its desktop a big brother. So we're definitely going to be seeing some power tuning having gone in here and obviously tuning the clock speeds and obviously not only the power limits as, and sorry, the power it uses but the power limit because obviously the 2080 tie on the desktop takes up a staggering 280 watts and when you're talking a laptop that's not really so much, you know, it's, it's a bit of an issue, let's just put it that way. 
So, what are your thoughts on these specs? I mean, these are looking pretty damn tasty. The 2070 and 2080 especially are looking like great choices for those of you who like to game on the go or just have, you know, a machine that is capable of some very demanding tasks, like perhaps, you know, um, image manipulation or video editing, that sort of thing. Or even if you just just like to have a fancy laptop I mean that's that's also okay but that's not the last thing I have with the 2060 as we have the very first picture of the RTX 2060 as well so I just want to say uh, right off the bat before I actually get into this particular mini topic is that this particular uh, image is fancy video but thanks to videocards.com and their sources over at Gigabyte who have confirmed that they are going to be launching a 2060 graphics card soon and here's, a, of course, a TU106 GPU with 1920 CUDA cores and 6 gigs of GDDR6 memory. And the gig, uh, sorry, the graphics card that you've been enjoying on screen is factory overclocked, but unfortunately we do not know the exact clock speeds. So that was a just ton of NVIDIA news that I just dropped right on your head like, boop. But now we have a little something from AMD. Now this is a bit of a weird one, to, to be honest, I'm a bit surprised to see, but we have a new trademark being registered by AMD. And of course we've been talking an awful lot about Navi lately, unsurprisingly, given that of course we are fully expecting to see that launch next year with a possible reveal, or, you know, hey, this is like, here's what's happening with it, announcement in January. But despite all of this, apparently Vega isn't going anywhere yet, as we have had a leak of again the trademark but also this logo as well with the rather famous v but with two stripes cut into it like a teenager shaving stripes into his eyebrows now for those of you curious on the actual source for this one uh, you can look at the link in the description below this video to just the uh, trademarks you can uh, see it for yourself and there is a bunch of information there and if you scroll right down to the bottom you will see that of course it does belong to AMD or Advanced Micro Devices Incorporated if you want to use the technical term. So interesting, we know literally nothing other than this is a trademark that exists but I would fully expect it to be a die shrink variant of Vega with 7nm that would seem, that would be, should I say, logical but of course again that is an assumption and we may see this at computex we may even see it beforehand we'll have to wait and see on that one so let's sort of finish proceedings off for this particular video shall we today as i honestly thought I'd, I'd seen the last of this for a while given that they're now officially you know going to be going to court and all this other stuff but nope the I, iPhone Apple versus Qualcomm battle is just continuing to get extraordinarily ugly as what we have here is that a court in China has banned the sale and import of iPhones into the country on the grounds of infringement of two patents coming from Qualcomm. So this does only encompass or include models running an older version of the OS. That is a very, very important caveat that we need to consider before I continue. But what does the court order actually say? Because I'm sure you're like, what? iPhone sales ban in China? Um, how screwed are they? <laughs> um, potentially, it, it could be damaging, but obviously this is Apple, so they're not just going to sit down on their hands like, that's ah, fine, it's fine. Anyway, so the court order says that the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, 7, 7 Plus, iPhone 8 Plus, and iPhone X cannot be sold or imported into the country. However, it doesn't affect manufacturing or exporting, so it literally is just going to affect the Chinese market, but you don't need me to tell you that's one of the biggest markets on the planet. Still, this uh, could potentially be hugely damaging. So why have they actually done this, I hear you ask? Well, it relies on two patents from Qualcomm, which relates to reformatting photos and the use of touch-based navigation apps. Now, the iOS thing is very, very important, as I already said, because any phone running iOS 12 or later, or the iOS 12 update, should I say, and obviously any updates after that will not be affected. So. We're going to know, most likely seeing software introduced by Apple to try and sort of circumvent that the ban and obviously get around and still sell as many iPhones as possible. 
and according to a statement on from Apple, iPhones are still retailing in China. And we have a do have a bit of a statement here from them as to what's going on here. They said, quote, Qualcomm's effort to ban our products is another desperate move by a company whose illegal practices are under investigation by regulators around the world. All iPhone models remain available for our customers in China. Qualcomm is asserting three patents they had never raised before, including one which has already been invalidated. We will pursue all our legal options through the courts. So yeah, they're most likely, as I already said, going to be implementing software solutions to this and obviously their latest ones, the XS XR and XS Max, are not going to be affected because they already come with the iOS 12 uh, update pre-installed. It's only going to be older phones that do not have this that are going to be affected, but again, Apple are already most likely got plans in motion to try and circumvent this. So yeah, this battle between these two companies is uh, eesh, getting pretty damn ugly. Going to be curious to see Qualcomm's response to this and if the Chinese court will allow them to do this software work around it. Obviously, it depends on um, how infringing they feel this patent, uh, the, their patent infringing is, I suppose you should say, and whether or not these software updates do enough to kind of not infringe them anymore, I suppose is the question. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.